Hi everyone, and welcome to this quick tutorial to show you how to get started 3D printing at Loveland Public Library. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is open an internet browser. You can choose Safari, Chrome, or Firefox. I personally would like to use Chrome because it already has some bookmarks for the 3D model repositories that we're going to use today. The two most common 3D model repositories are Thingiverse and My Mini Factory. Both have free 3D prints that you can use. I'm going to show you how to use Thingiverse because it's the most popular and has the most models for free. Click on the bookmark for Thingiverse to get started. Now, when we first open the website, we're going to see a lot of different 3D prints that we could click on. These are just the featured prints for today. You can scroll through the list here if you'd like. You can also click more to view even more files. These are the most popular prints that Thingiverse wants you to download. We can also look under Explore to look by things, designers, groups, or customizable items. We can also search for models by using the search toolbar at the top. Type in a keyword that you're looking for and you're going to find tons, if not hundreds, of models with your different keyword selection. If you click more, you can continue to find the different models that you're looking for. You're going to see that there's a lot of variety here. So what you'll do is you're going to click on the one that you like. Before we download the model, we want to look at some of its features. Click through the slideshow of images to see if this is a model that is actually printable and to see what the virtual rendering looks like. We also want to read some of the descriptions in the summary. This is where you can find really important information such as does the model need supports or does it need specific settings. This is where you can also look at the license for the model or whether or not you're allowed to distribute it after you print it. Now we're going to actually download this model. If you click download all files at the top, it's going to download a zip file. That's best for models that have a several different models in one file group. But if it's just a single model like this dog, we want to go into thing files and click download from there. Remember that the 3D printer can only print .stl or .obj files. It just can't read other type of files. The downloads go into the downloads folder on the Mac. You can find by clicking finder, clicking downloads, and seeing where your models are at. Now, we don't want to actually double click on this because we need to open the specialty software first in order to read the file. The specialty software is called Cura for Lulzbot. Cura is a type of program called a slicer. A slicer breaks down the code of the model into different movement and temperature instructions for the machine. We have to load the model into this software in order to send the information to the printer. Double click on the black and green or blue and white C icon that's on the Mac's dock. It'll be black and green if it had been open that day already. It'll be blue and white if it hadn't been open that day at all. Give it a few moments to load. It's a very uh, graphic heavy software so sometimes it takes a little bit longer than the average program to open. Once Cura has loaded, right click anywhere in the gray area to pan your camera. You'll notice that what you're looking at looks exactly like a digital version of the glass printing plate. If you right click, you'll also see additional icons that allow you to arrange your models, clear the plate, center your models, etc. To load your model, go up to the very top left corner, find the open file folder, navigate to downloads, then double click on your file or click open. This will load your model into the Cura platform. Here we can see a digital rendering of our dog model. If we click and pan the camera with the right mouse button, we can see all the different angles of our model. The blue, green, and red lines indicate the southwest corner of our plate, so this orientation would be exactly how it would print in real life. Now we can get going putting together some settings to print our model. Keep in mind that category, material, and profile are already preset to defaults that work well for this printer. You won't need to change them. Just make sure that category says all, material says polylite PLA, and profile says standard. There aren't a whole lot of settings that you're going to want to change with your 3D model. Keep it under recommended settings. Infill indicates how much material is inside the model. 20% is usually good for most models, but if you need it to be more, click and drag the slider to make a greater percentage of infill. We'll talk about supports in a second, but the next setting you're going to want to look at is build plate adhesion. 
A skirt is a redundant line of plastic that prints in order to prime the plastic to flow through the nozzle smoothly. Now, a brim will help the model adhere to the glass plate if it only has a little bit of touchdown to the glass plate. We'll take a look at this more in depth later, but for most models, a skirt is fine. To move your model, first click on it, and then in the left hand corner, click the cube with the arrow. That will give you some sliders that you can click and drag to move your model across the plate left and right, up and down, or back and forth. Keep in mind that when your model moves off the build plate, it turns gray and tells you that there's nothing to print. Make sure that your model is centered on the plate instead by right clicking on it and click center selected model. At this point, we can tell how big our model is going to be by looking in the bottom right corner. It first tells us how tall, wide, and long our model is in millimeters. Then it tells us how long it's going to take to print and how many grams of filament it's going to take. This particular model is going to be 4 hours 39 minutes and take 65 grams with the plastic. That might be too much for your iCreate appointment, so here's how you scale it down. Navigate to the left hand side and click the cube that has the arrows in opposing directions. This allows you to scale your models. You can scale by percentage by manually typing in a percentage such as 80%. You can uncheck uniform scaling to scale just one axis at a time. And if you're unhappy with your selection, you can click the reset arrow to set it back to normal size. From here, you can actually click the blue, green, or red cubes to resize by dragging if you prefer that. But remember, if you want it to look proportional, make sure you check uniform scaling. In order to have our model print in our appointment time, we're going to scale it down quite a bit to 40%. We can see here now that it's only going to take an hour and six minutes and be six grams of filament. This is going to get done in the time we had allotted for sure. To rotate our model, we'll navigate back to the left side panel and click the cube with the arrow that's curved. This brings up some different rotation compasses that we can click and drag to rotate our model. Remember, most often models will print best in the orientation that's original to them. We always want to print models with the flattest part on the glass plate. Think of it like a foundation of a house. You need your foundation to be really solid in order to print a model accurately. We can try to click the lay flat button, but it doesn't always work. So if you click reset and then reorient your model, you'll have a much better time. The next setting we need to talk about are supports. Supports are redundant scaffolding material that build from the plate upwards to hold up anything that has overhang. The 3D printer is able to print any angle above 45 degrees without needing supports. But how can we tell if we need supports for our model? We're going to scroll around, pan the camera, and look at where the red areas are on our model. That indicates an angle lower than 45 degrees, which means we need support structure in order to be able to print that and have it look really nice. Navigate to the right hand side of your screen and click the generate support box. This will automatically generate supports underneath anything that needs it in the model. This will also increase the print time and the amount of plastic just a little bit, but it is necessary for the print to actually come out really nice. To check the supports, click solid view and then layer. This will show the actual layers of the 3D model as well as what the supports are going to look like. What you're seeing here is exactly what the machine sees. Use the slider on the right to look through the layers of the model. The red lines indicate the outermost perimeter, the green the innermost perimeter, and the yellow indicates infill. You can see that the model is actually hollow except for the 20% infill. The blue lines indicate support structure. It only touches the model a little bit, but remember it's there to help hold up the parts that would otherwise print in thin air. We also see the skirt that helps prime the nozzle, but remember if we change it to brim, it butts up against the edge of the model to help it adhere to the glass plate. This is really good for parts that have a little bit of touch down to the glass, such as the paws of the dog, but the rest of the body would be fine. For this though, I think a skirt is going to be sufficient. We've now checked and changed all of the settings we need to look at to make sure our model 3D prints correctly. We've looked at the layers, we've checked whether it needs supports, we've changed the brim, seen that it has a nice flat bottom. So what do we do next? Navigate to the bottom right of your screen. Instead of clicking save to file, we're going to click print via USB. This will send the signal over the USB cord from your model instructions to the 3D printer. None of these settings we have to change, it does everything automatically. In a moment you're going to hear the machine whir on and start to print. The machine knows what to do from here on out. 
However, if you see any potential issues, you can hit the pause or abort button. Pause is good for if you're not sure if there's a problem or not, pause it, come and grab a staff member. If you are certain that there's an error, such as the plastic squirting all over the place or hearing a very, very bad noise, hit the abort button. This will immediately stop the printer. Then come and grab a staff member so we can double check that everything's okay. Otherwise, all you have to do is sit back and watch your 3D model being made. Thanks for 3D printing with Loveland Public Library, and for any additional questions, please ask a staff member.